Hey, GM, to all those who are in the crypto world, this is Kent Philly again. Today is April 4th, 2023, and here are some quick tips around Rocket Pool and staking Ethereum. So I was doing some analysis today and went back to one of my favorite sites for on-chain analytics put into traditional finance terms, and this is tokenterminal.com. They are just the most fire analytics. And what was really exciting for me was to be able to see how, you know, beyond tracking just revenue on chain, which is something that I have been looking over the last, you know, five years since actively investing in crypto. Back then, there wasn't that much revenue for protocols, but Ethereum found a breakout use case with ICOs back in 2017. Um, and now, you know, NFTs and uh, everything in Web3 is now being built off of or around and on top of Ethereum's uh, virtual machine community. And when a lot of people don't understand that, you can just break it down into financial terms for them. And so that's where things can get, oh, I got to zoom out again. My apologies. Really exciting for me when we can show, so I'll remove the definitions for now, but just looking at, we'll have to zoom out even a bit more to look at the last, you know, we're not done with 2023 yet, but looking over the last, you know, three plus years, we can see Ethereum's, you know, financial statements in a traditional company terms. So in the last year, Ethereum has made 102% more earnings already. And how does that come about? That comes about from, you know, their income statement, which takes the fees and considers supply side fees. And then the revenue, also token incentives. So those token incentives are when new Ethereum are created to reward validators for securing the network. So they subtract that difference and you can see the net earnings. Now, really exciting part. Look at this. The net fees in 2023 are down sorry, token incentives, not fees, are down 97%. So that means Ethereum's amount of token supply has decreased this year by 97%. In 2022, it decreased 41%. Now, like most projects, when you reach towards scale, you are creating a lot of tokens and liquidity in the market to incentivize participants to engage with your network. And in Ethereum terms, that was, you know, they created 14. 8 billion dollars in 2021 in new ethereum tokens to incentivize stakers back then proof of work stakers uh, having miners to secure the network and the importance of that was to be able to have the most decentralized network and trust layer um, so that we could have permissionless and censorship you know interactions on the internet. DeFi is the major breakout use case, but NFTs are clearly going to bring in the creator economy and refi or regenerative finance is going to help bring in anyone who's interested in the environment. So really excited to see, you know, the social innovations that come on top of Ethereum and everything in the Web3 space. But taking it back to, you know, other interesting statistics, while we see that the earnings have increased 102% this year, the price is down 20%. So when, when the supply has decreased in growing by 97%, the earnings have increased by 100% and the price is down, that's an interesting take. So there's some compression going on. There's not enough information in the you know, public investing space as to why Ethereum you know, could be worth more than it is today. And if we look back towards last year when it was 2K, this year, it's less than it was last year. It was down 28% from the year before. So we can see that you know Ethereum goes in large volatility scales where they grew 800% in price in 2021, but now we're back down to you know the prices in 2020. So this was a fun statistic to look at. And another site that helps put that into perspective is ultrasound.money. Now, those of you who may not be familiar with ultrasound.money, this started off as a meme that Ethereum should earn a premium for being the most um, important digital asset. So it has a premium for not only being a store of value, but also being a, you know, a medium of exchange. 
as well as you know a bond that continually pays the risk-free rate of return for staking Ethereum. So one thing I wanted to show you here, this is quite a complicated you know, website, but the fun part, bring it to the financial terms is near the bottom and they're comparing the revenue. So it's rate monetary premium. So the race to become the most desirable money. Now, when you look at annualized profits and the Ethereum pricing model, now we could adjust their growth profile. And so that is the price to earnings ratio, but with annualized profits right now of $4.3 billion, um, you can see that Ethereum and its growth profile is right between Tesla and Amazon. So we can now put Ethereum in terms with the fastest growing tech companies, leveraging new types of statistics, just based on the revenue that Ethereum is generating. Not all protocols generate you know, enough revenue, revenue to sustain, you know, their token incentives and oftentimes they're unprofitable. But Ethereum is quite different in the fact that there's a large demand for the block space and thus they're able to make a lot of profit. And so we can now see some more details. So the implied Ethereum price is at $1,900 if it just has a 1X premium on a monetary premium. If we compare it to gold, gold supposedly has a monetary premium of 10x the amount of you know gold there truly is in existence. And if you compared Ethereum to gold with the monetary premium, Ethereum could be and should be worth eighteen point eighteen thousand eight hundred dollars, or almost close to nineteen thousand dollars per token. So. The Stake Rock Pool team are very bullish on Ethereum for a variety of reasons. And if you didn't like that view of you know, the financial statement or looking at ultrasound money, you can come back to Token Terminal and check out the revenue of all the top projects. So I am currently not logged in um, and there's a lot of free information available that you don't need the pro subscription for. Now it's currently loading, but I've viewed this chart many times and we'll have a highlight on the summary and we'll see that one project in particular, Ethereum, just makes ridiculous amount of revenue compared to the rest of the competitors. The next largest competitor is Tron. That's its own L1 ecosystem as well. And then we have OpenSea in number three, which is an NFT platform that's built on top of Ethereum as well as other Ethereum compatible chains. Now, I won't go into some of the other top revenue earning, you know, protocols or DeFi projects, but when you see a chart like this and you do not see um, any of the other, you know, largest L1 tokens besides Solana back here with $9 million in revenue, or we have, you know, BNB chain with 29.9 million dollars of revenue, you know, Avalanche is making more revenue than BNB chain, which is pretty enlightening to me. And some investors like to compare how much revenue they're making, you know, the price to earnings, and then evaluate which project they'd like to spend more time in. And so my friends and I have decided that Ethereum is the ecosystem we want to spend more time in. And the really exciting news for the Rocket Pool fans out there is that Rocket Pool is now on token terminal. Never done that before. Hopefully that was entertaining for some of you. I've been told I'm kind of monotone sometimes, but here we can see Rocket Pool inside of Token Terminal with some key statistics. Now, these top statistics are just around the price. Um, what is really interesting to me is when you kind of dive into you know, the total value locked, um, you know, assets staked $733 million in Ethereum that's staked through Rocket Pool. So that is the key feature to the RPL token is that you take RPL and you combine it with Ethereum to create a node. And that RPL is your collateral for the liquid staking token, RETH, that's created on the open market for smaller investors who are not able to put down 8 ETH or 16 ETH to run their own solo validator. Now, I thought the key metrics that are most fun for me to look at, they're also free are in the you know the bar chart here and we can see that you know the amount of rocket pool 
token holders continues to increase as well as the amount of rocket pool increases. So currently showing about almost 8,000 RPL individual token holder addresses. We don't know if those are all individuals because one person could have a hundred wallets, but realistically managing a lot of wallets is quite challenging. And when you've lost a seed phrase to a wallet, you realize you really wanna be strategic. You don't care too much about trying to be pseudo anonymous. Every transaction is public. You're gonna report them just like we do and I do. And so most likely there are close to 7,700 individual rocket pool participants and owners, or if not even more, because there are other private investors who, you know, have ownership stake on a wallet, but don't necessarily have an individual wallet themselves. And so check out Token Terminal. We hope this quick video and tip on how to get towards financial statements for Ethereum and other top projects uh, like Rocket Pool, our favorite via Token Terminal. So Rocket Pool is just added to Token Terminal. And, you know, I honestly have not looked through all of the metrics yet, but I'm quite excited to see how they're going to compare Rocket Pool here to the competitors. And as we can see, yep. Lido still has significantly more Ethereum locked up, but you know that's largely due to the lower fees that uh, Lido charges. And as many people like myself learned that when you transfer from stake ETH to ETH, you'll lose money and you reflect and you realize decentralization really does matter to you. I believe more and more Lido users will move over to Rocket Pool. Um, Stakewise will probably continue to grow and you know as will Anchor with their own markets, but Rocket Pool is above and beyond any other competitor in space today with the most decentralization, um, as well as competitive offerings for node operators to earn the most yield or for just you know, smaller token holders to pay a little bit more premium, you know, 5% more than you pay on Lido, but to have the faith that you're going to be able to continually have an up only token that increases in ETH value, it's tax optimized and currently has a premium in the market, which likely it would maintain, showing that the market does value our ETH more than it values other competitors in the space. Hopefully you liked the video. Thanks a lot for your time.